jacket for U of L and a CG honoring Clinton Glasscock. Classmate of mine at St. X, who died earlier this year, a former a Bellarmine booster. As we're ready to go here, as JJ Trainer wins the tip, and here is Sky Clark. Three cards scored in double figures in the last game. Sky Clark coming off a 29 point every. See JJ Trainer in the starting lineup after his 20 point nine rebound effort on Saturday against the Aggies. Yeah, Trainer gets a start. Dennis Evans uh, only played three minutes against the Aggies as Louisville gets a corner three from Mike James to start him off. Trey White, little ball movement early on. A couple extra passes, and uh, Mike James gets a bucket for three. Kind of good to get him going. Let's take a look at the starting 5-4 bill, and we see Alec Cream, Peter Suter, Garrett Tipton, Bash Whelan, and LT Hatton, Langdon Hatton, LT from North Harrison High School, and James Madison. And the cards, as Brandon Huntley Hatfield has it in the post, you should see them going inside to him quite a bit, but Frame knocks it away and it goes off of Huntley Hatfield. Trey White, Sky Clark, Mike James, Brandon Huntley Hatfield, and JJ Trainer. Dennis Evans has been in that lineup most of the year, Jody, but he only played a few minutes on Saturday. But the main thing for the cards is good to see Mike James had been one for ten from three in his last four games. He had been doing other things to affect the game, not scoring, not shooting it well. And he said he just got to continue to do it. He had been doing some extra work, and uh, we talked to him yesterday, and uh, it paid off right there from the beginning. It's a Bellarmine team that's going to be very patient. They're going to make the extra pass a lot of times, work the shot clock down as we see it there. And a bucket into the lane for Garrett Tipton. Tipton. you got to be disciplined on defense against this team, as we saw last year, and, and Scotty Davenport's team's known for that. Garrett Tipton coming off of a monster effort last year here in this game. 21 points in that 67-66 win. That was a strange game, a game where Bellin didn't score for the, the last four plus minutes, but still able to hold on for the one point win. Wheeling inside as it knocked away by Clark. Yeah, I remember uh, jump in, ball. in that game, what will outscore 11-0 is, uh, we, saw, we see the three-pointer here. Nice job by Trey White getting the ball to the open James in the corner. James had that 25-point effort in the first game, and look at that, in the last three, just 15 total points, three for 19 from the field, so that had uh, been a talking point, getting him going, and he hits the early three. Once again, deep into the shot clock, it's gonna be like Suter. this all night. Off the back of the rim, and here comes Scott Clark pushing it off the cards. We know they like to draw fouls. Yeah, they do. It's been the best thing they've done so far, especially in the last game. They shot 49 free throws against New Mexico State. And that time, a little miscommunication. Sky Clark thinking Trey White was cutting to the basket. Instead, he went to the corner and uh, a turnover there for Louisville. Into Tipton. Tipton, the rip through, and he goes baseline on James, and a, and a quick foul on Mike James, his first and the team first here in the early going. Again, every time Bellerman has the ball, you're going to see extra pass, a lot of backdoor, a lot of to the basket, like that, just right there. Cut right after with the recovery. Though. Fake and cut. Louisville gets it. Clark out on the break. Trainer with the air ball from the baseline, had the rebound for Bellerman. If Bellerman finds a matchup they like, they will take advantage of it. And Tipton showed us last year, he's able to drive to the basket and score in the paint. And he can also hit for free. There you go. Good ball movement by Bellerman. They're always going to look and try to get the easy shot. That one, an open look for Tipton. They are playing shorthanded tonight without Ben Johnson. Fantastic three-point shooter. Bellman, this uh, program in its fourth year as they're transitioning to Division I. James with a miss and frame the rebound. They really go through the gauntlet early in the season. A suitor gets all the way to the basket. Easy two, and it is 7-3 nights in the early going. So disciplined, so take it to the basket. Kind of, kind of lull the defense to sleep a little bit on the drive and then just accelerate and go right by for Suter. A very, very good job offensively. Knights come in here two and five, but they've only played two home games 
this season as Bash Wheeling comes up with a steal. Already played at Washington, at Kansas State, at West Virginia. As I said, that four-point loss on Sunday. Frame baseline to Hack. Gets it inside. Has his shot blocked by Trainer. Clark in the corner. A lot of times, Louisville, as we've seen early in other games, settling for a couple threes and then taking some quick shots here early on. Cards is one for five from the field in the early going. Suter inside, misses over Trainer. That looked like Cat Huntley Hatfield knocked it out, but it's gonna be Louisville ball. Mike James starts it off for Louisville with a three-pointer from the corner. It's the only bucket the Cards have made, though. Bellerman, a three from Tipton. They've got a 7-3 lead. Back here in the KFCM Center, Bellerman on a 7-0 run. The Cards in a four-minute scoring drought. And the Knights came in here last year, last November, November 9th, and got their first win ever over at Louisville in 13 games. You see Garrett Tipton had 21 points and three rebounds in that. Mike, Mike James had 16 for UofL. Get this, Bellerman players, current Bellerman players, scored 56 of their 67 points in that game. Um, now that's including Ben Johnson, who's not playing tonight. Current UofL players only scored 30. So Louisville with a couple new pieces here, and they hope that will be the difference. But so far, it's seven three nights in the early going. A couple of new pieces out there for Bellerman. is again an offensive foul on uh, Louisville. Huntley Hatfield again on the moving screen. A couple of new pieces out there. Billy Smith and Desmond McKinney in the game for Bellerman. They do not have Ben Johnson, as we said, 13 points a game. Uh, he was injured Sunday at West Virginia. 13 points. He's 16 of 40 from three-point range. Guys with four turnovers in the early going. Smith and McKinney both transfers from McKinney from North Dakota State and Smith uh, from Indianapolis. Brabuff played for Todd Howard in Indianapolis. Brabuff and a transfer from Miami of Ohio, which, as Jody, as you know, is the Harvard of the Midwest. He misses the air ball on the three track. Huntley Hatfield there for the rebound. White makes a little move. Shot up and good go. for Trey White. And that's, again, for those of you just maybe watching Louisville the first time, transfer from USC, and that's his game. The pull-up game is so good at it, and when he's got it going, he is tough to stop. Tipton comes up with the loose ball after the wheel and drive. Back to Tipton out front to McKinney to Suter with under 10 on the shot clock. Suter driving on White, loses the ball in the lane. Cards with a chance to tie or take the lead with the three. Clark has got a wipe. He passes up the three to get into the trainer with Tipton on him. Passes up another three, and James is going to get a wide open three. Misses that one. White with the rebound. At the next dead ball, we'll get Dennis Evans and Tyler Johnson in for Louisville. And, I, and the, the Louisville offense seems to run a lot smoother with Johnson on the court, as it, we've seen in the last couple of games. It really does. Louisville now two of eight with four turnovers here. I'll tell you what, this watch Bellerman and watch Tipton away from the ball. Tipton is number 10. He moves as well as anybody away from the ball. Like a little turnaround jumper there from Wheelan, the hook shot. But uh, that's what makes Bellerman so good is the movement without the ball. And if you watch Tipton, number 10, he is always, always moving. And that gets him a lot of, uh, of, of those easy shots. 10 on the shot clock for Louisville. Just the two field goals in the early one. James to the basket, the left-handed shot goes in. So James struggled the last three games shooting the ball. He's got five here in the early going. McKinney, Scotty Davenport says, Des McKinney is the quickest player he's ever had. Dylan Penn, who we had a couple years ago, ended up transferring to Vermont and playing in the NCAA tournament last year, was the fastest, but McKinney is the quickest coming back from a knee injury last year at North Dakota State. Clark will try to three and got it. And the cards are back in front 10 now. Give that to Trey White, both on the defensive end, getting a hand at the face and recovering at the last minute to force a three off the mark and then got the ball out and he drew the defense to him, and then Clark opened for the three. Big assist. 7-2 run for Louisville, and deflection by Mike James. Can't make the save, but cards in front, 10-9, and Jody, they're not getting beat 
back door. Back door. They're not giving up a lot of uh, easy baskets in the early going. Tyler Johnson in the game, and we mentioned him. He had a, he had a great trip to New York and, and played pretty well the other day against New Mexico State, Joey. Look at this. In the last three games, you were there for the Texas and Indiana games. He's been fantastic when he's been out there. All that against Indiana coming in the second half of the game as well. When Tyler Johnson has been on the floor for Louisville recently, they have been successful offensively. I don't think Evans got a piece of that, but I think he might have affected it because he yeah, actually Evans. closed out. Uh, Caleb Blend and Dennis Evans also in the game for Louisville right now. Caleb Blend made a huge impact in that Indiana game. Yeah, and then didn't play as well uh, on Sunday against New Mexico State. He got an opportunity earlier, early in the game, kind of like this, but just didn't play well. As Tyler over to James, and there's Glenn with the offensive rebound and a putback. He misses it, but that's him being active and bringing energy to this team. That's his uh, his role on this squad. McKinney oh, on the baseline. Cards bounce back from some shooting struggles early. They lead 10-9. Oh, with a 10-9 lead here in the early going over Bellman, maybe the most shot in game. Cards have not shot a free throw yet in this game after shooting 49 on Sunday. There are the two coaches, Scotty Davenport in his 19th season at Bellman, 415 and 153. Of course, the 2011 NCAA Division II National Championship and an assistant coach here at Louisville under Denny Crum and also for Rick Patino. And then Kenny Payne, of course, played here at UofL. Uh, Coach Jerry Jones, who uh, I saw Kenny Payne visiting coach today. I uh, want to wish Coach Jones well. I know a lot of people have been stopping by visiting him. He, he coached Scotty on the freshman team back in the day. He'd play him if Scotty didn't shoot. The former Iroquois star that he was. Curtis Williams on the court. We see Tyler Johnson who came in for that last segment. Was that a pass or an it air was, ball? It, it ends up being a good pass. <laughs> it was an air ball, but a good pass there from Tyler. Caleb Glenn again. His job, energy on this team, and uh, getting rebounds and being physical. And uh, he gets a putback right there. McKinney trying to post up Tyler. He's asking for him to clear out. He wants he wants a shot at this, but he forgets something. Ball goes right. Smith out to frame his three off the rim, and Tyler gets the rebound. Johnson, Glenn, Evans, White, and Curtis Williams on the court for the cards. We lead it 12-9 after falling behind 7-3 early. Evans with the miss in the lane, and that's monumental, Jody, because that's his first shot, I think, since the second game. As the jump ball is forced down low. And Dennis Evans is really, we saw him early. He got, in what, four dunks in that first exhibition game, and then he's kind of been a non-factor lately. Well, and that's what Trey White just told him something there, and he's getting coaching from his own teammate on the floor. He's like, shoot it a little sooner, because I think he had an opportunity, and he took one more dribble. He's going to be a good player. Curtis Williams to the bucket. He's going to be good, too. It's just taking time for Dennis Evans, as we've seen him struggle with the physicality of the game. That was his first field goal attempt since the opening game. Hat in the lane, and he'll get caught for the travel as he ran into the 7-1 Evans. <laughs> he ran into him and then got a shuffle a couple times there. How about Caleb Glenn? Two points and three rebounds already for Caleb. He plays hard, and that's going to keep you on the court. It is definitely going to keep you on the court. Cards with four offensive rebounds in the early morning. Johnson baseline kicks it out to Williams. Dalo Jovanovic going to check in at the next dead ball as well. And Johnson with another deep three. Those two threes haven't looked great. No, and I don't think that's, I don't think you're going to see that. That was actually not bad ball movement on that possession for Louisville. Much better than what we had been seeing. But you don't want to see that three-pointer at, at the very end. Still had six seconds left. 10 on the shot clock for the Knights. Frame drives to Whelan, and we're going to get a foul on, I think, Tyler Johnson there on the baseline. Yeah, I think Tyler Johnson, and again, he's got to recognize on that one, don't reach. I've got the big fellow right there who is, if Whelan was going to take that shot, it was going to get blocked. Sky Clark coming back in for Tyler, and then uh, Jovanovic coming in for Trey White. The first time we've seen Jovanovic in a couple games. And Bellerman has not committed a foul yet after New Mexico State <laughs> Just about their entire team foul out here on Sunday. Suter takes Jovanovic right to the basket. Looks like he might have had a look underneath. 
course, Evans is lurking. Tipped in it with seven on the shot clock, misses, and Glenn goes way up. He even went over Dennis Evans, didn't he, to get yeah, that he jump? Did. Caleb Glenn is uh, out here with a purpose tonight on the boards. Jovanovic misses. Thought there might have been a charge there. Tipped in another triple. Got it. Garrett Tipton likes playing in the KFC Yum Center, Jody. That's 29 points for him in the last two games. 21 last year in the game. Two for three for, from three in the early going. Williams is a guy who, yeah, if he gets some looks, he, he could catch fire. He's maybe looks to me like he could be the best shooter on his team, the most I, consistent shooter. He's a guy who has struggled with, uh, I think, the speed of the game early on. He's a guy who looks more comfortable as we go along uh, in the games. But, yeah, he's going to be able to shoot it. He's, he's got does a little bit of everything. Shooter again with Ivanovich on him. Whelan drives on Glenn. Turns in the lane and hits. That's a freshman mistake there for Caleb Glenn. He drives in the lane and then Caleb kind of just relaxes for a split second and gives him that little bit of an opening. And I think Caleb might be coming out here. He's had a pretty good look so far. Huntley Hatfield set the check in for the cards in the next about you. It's a little trouble dribbling it there. Williams with the heat check off the back of the rim. Now that wasn't really in the offense though. No, and that's what this team does. They do it so many times. Caleb Glenn gets his hand on the ball. He gets a deflection there. Hatton thinking twice before trying to shoot over Evans. Whelan will try it. He misses, and Glenn with the rebound. We're going to get a foul. I think Is that on Glenn? It's going to be on Glenn. Yeah, he kind of gave him a little shove. We'll see a replay as we go to break, though, here. Curtis Williams getting a three, and Tipton with the three as we go back-to-back -back threes. There's the Tipton. And then a Curtis Williams three is the Cards lead, 15-14. Back to the KFC Up Center, Louisville with a 15-14 lead on Bellarmin. And that Louisville three-point defense has been much improved in the last four games. And so far tonight, it's been great for everybody except for Garrett Tipton. <laughs> I would say tipped in two of three, the team two of eight for Bellarmine. But you look at it in the last four games, and again, that is something that uh, that early on they were getting so opponents were getting so many easy open looks, and Louisville has done a better job on the defensive end as far as the three point line is concerned. Knights have not committed or been called for a foul yet in the first twelve plus minutes of this half. And it was a foul on Caleb Glenn as we went to the break. So his first foul, Louisville now has four. And Huntley Hatfield came in for Dennis Evans and not Glenn. So Glenn and Huntley Hatfield on the floor with Williams Clark. Suter by Clark, drives, tries to get it out to Tipton. It's knocked away. One on the shot clock. He's going to have to shoot it from midcourt. The way he's been firing. He misses the loose ball. And Suter able to save that on the sideline right in front of us. It's just a hustle play. Louisville, Plenty three of time guys. for Bellarmine, but Tipton just bullies his way into the paint. Can't get it to go. And, Kent, that was three Louisville guys looking at the ball and just kind of Kenny Payne just puts his hand on his head like, what do I've got to do? As Huntley Hatfield gets it underneath, and it's going to be out of bounds off of Bellarmine. Huntley Hatfield played so well in New York and then kind of regressed yeah. a little bit in the New Mexico State game. Really, really the effort more than anything in the New Mexico State game. I thought he just came out and and, and kind of went through the motions, as Coach Payne said. He's got to have more from Brandon Huntley Hatfield if this team is going to do anything uh, uh, capable of what they think they can do. If they're going to win any games at all, he's got to be a factor. We're going to have 14 rebounds in the Chattanooga game. Scott Clark gets to the basket and scores and increases that Louisville lead to three, which is their largest lead of the half. Bellarmine guys always looking to shoot, but always going to make that extra pass, and we see it there. It's Huntley Hatfield. I think he got him with. I don't think he got him with his hand. He really got him with his uh, leg. We'll see Scott Clark here. As look, watch, watch here, watch Mike James. Huntley Hatfield comes up, set the pick. Mike James is there, drawing guys, and Clark just goes right to him. He actually had Mike James open there for a second. 
Alec Frim to the line for two free throws, shooting 83% so far this season. He graduate student from Cincinnati, Ohio, and famed Moeller High School, the alma mater of the likes of Barry Larkin, Ken Griffey Jr., and Alec Freem, as we see Sky Clark. First three games and then the, the last three games. He, remember, yeah, the first three games all here in the KFC. I'm sorry, he did not get a three-pointer. And then uh, came back from New York and scored 29 in the win over New Mexico State. Let me correct myself. I just saw that replay up on the big screen here. That was not a foul <laughs> on Brandon Huntley Hatfield. It live, I saw what the official saw. It looked like it was, but it was not. And Clark dribbling right Frame. into a double team right there. Took away from him. Trying to call a timeout, and they get the timeout. They did get the timeout. Looked like it might be a jump ball, but Freem... Be wherewithal to call that and, and see, that's where Sky Clark has got to be better as the point guard of this team. You've got guys around you that are open, and he drove right into the heart of what ended up being an easy double team and an easy turnover and steal for Bellarmine. You can't do that if you're the point guard. Take a look at Kenny Payne in the uh, in the Cards huddle. You see, through six games last year, the Cards, of course, started the season 0 and 6. This year, the points per game up, free throw percentage about the same, and, and the rebound, that's effort. The rebounding, uh, much improved. It, it is. They've been doing a much better job on the boards, and as we mentioned earlier, as we mentioned earlier on the three-point line, and when you combine the rebounding and the three-point line of being uh, more aggressive, you look, and, you, and you're going to win some games. And, and the turnovers are down. Yeah. That was a, obviously a major issue last season that... Uh, we say that in tonight already with five turnovers here for Louisville. Trainer making it a little hard for the Knights to get it inbounds. James guarding Suter. Maybe the key on the turnovers tonight. So five turnovers for Louisville, only two points off the turnovers uh, for Bellerman. Suter takes James to the basket, but Smith on the cut in the lane. Back out to Whelan. Six on the shot clock for Bellerman. Bash kicks it out to Smith for the three, and he got it. And Billy Smith. That's just take it on one side. No, we're going to go back to the other side, swing it into the left, go to the right, swing it back in, and go inside and come back out. It's just a little bit of a uh, in and out game there for Bellerman and a uh, school of the Louisville defense. And Whelan didn't panic with the shot clock running down when he got in the paint. He kicked it out to Smith for that triple as he's the first night to hit a three. Other than Tipton, the third lead change of the half, and Bash beats everybody down court and scores. And the Bellman lead is up to four. And Kenny Payne has seen enough of that. Yeah, that's a bad segment for Louisville there as they now trail 21 17. Check out the ball movement here for the Knights. You see Bash Whelan gets in the lane. Shot clock running down. Smith makes himself available and then hits the triple. And Kent, the one thing about that, and it's it's so indicative of this Bellarmine team when they're playing well, is not only are they moving the ball and guys moving without the ball, but the ball's going inside out, inside out, back around the other way. You see Scott Davenport as they've made five assists or, on eight made field goals. Or Popsy. As he's also called, he has a new grandson, Jake Scott Davenport. Congrats to Ashley and Russ as uh, Rand now has a baby brother. Williams to White. White will try the three, and he got it. And cards are back within one. It's the fourth player with a three for Louisville tonight. That snap the 7-0 Bellerman run back out to Smith he'll try another three can't get it to go trainer with a rebound for the cards Ooh, and I thought white and James both passed up pretty good looks at three swing it over get Williams a good look on a three a little short that was as good a shot as he's gonna that get is, that is as he good a shot open Deflection by Trey White. The Bellman ball the baseline. 404 to play. They lead by one. The one thing that Louisville, with, especially with this lineup that is in there right now, is the length. And I think that bo has bothered Bellerman a little bit on the defensive end. When you've got Trainer and Williams and, and James with, with White, they've got a lot of length, as you see. They're getting their hands on a lot of balls and not allowing Bellerman to get into as much. They're still getting some good looks and some good shots when they move it, but it takes a little longer. 
Again, this Bellarmine program in its fourth and final year it doesn't appear the NCAA is going to grant them that waiver. So their fourth and final year of transitioning from NCAA Division II to one. And Pete Suter just absolutely makes a man move on the baseline to put Bellarmine back up by three. Yeah, it takes it right at Trey White. And then the help coming over goes right through two defenders. The pedigree of these Bellarmine players, winners in high school, Suter, a starter on two state championship teams at Carmel, as Tipton beats everybody down the court for the dunk. Tipton's in double figures with 10 for the second straight year in the KOC Yum Center, and Bellarmine leads by five. Whoa, a screen on Scott Clark. Suter knocked down, and we're going to get a foul on Clark, and the Bellarmine bench up and celebrating because the Knights have wrestled away control of this one. Des McKinney to Garrett, tipped it for the slam. Knights on an 11-3 run. For New Mexico State on Sunday, and cards have not drawn a foul tonight. Just before the timeout, we had uh, Sky Clark called for a personal foul as he set a screen on Pete Suter. You know, and, and Kent, the one thing that we saw on Sunday, what Louisville did so well was take the ball to the basket. That's how they were drawing all those fouls. Really, the Cards haven't been doing that a whole lot here this evening. Smith in the paint, back to Whelan. Ten on the shot clock. Here's Tipton. He has in double figures already. Gets to the paint. And Trainer with a block. His second of the game. Tipton leads everybody with ten points so far tonight. Clark, Williams, White, Trainer, and James on the court for the cards. Trailing by five, and the scoring drought in just over two minutes. Williams forcing, that was a little forced. It was, it was a good idea. I like to actually take it to the basket, but not like that. It was a wide open three for Tipton. He missed that. He's not gonna miss very many of those, and he was absolutely wide open. That might've been the closest person to him. I like that idea on the last trip by Curtis Williams of trying to attack and get the ball into the into the paint, but everything but the shot was good. Yes. Oh, actually, and hit the extra pass there to Clark for an open three, but he can't get it to go. Well, we'll get an outscore 12 to six in points in the paint. That's what's wrong with this Louisville offense tonight. Well, we mentioned Bellarmine without uh, Ben Johnson, their leading scorer. Also, Kurt Hope, their would have been their starting center was injured before the start of the season and out for the season Williams all the way to the basket fouled by Tipton and there we go the first foul of the night for the night that'll get a Bronx cheer for the crowd here in the KFC I'm the Louisville fans at least coming up at halftime Jody you know every other team in the ACC playing in the in the ACC SEC challenge we're going to take a look at the top five plays from day one of the challenge that's coming up at halftime also Kelsey and Luke and Joel are going to talk non-conference scheduling and some early takeaways from the first few games of the season first couple weeks of this season and of course we'll also have some highlights from this first half here Bellinger with a five point lead on Louisville as we near the one minute mark 15 seconds on the shot clock for the cards. White, the fallaway jumper, misses, and that'll be saved by Whelan on the baseline. I thought it was going to be Louisville ball. But here come the Knights. Whelan to Suter. He likes that matchup on Clark, but Clark thought he was out of bounds. We can't see. He was pretty adamant about it. Yeah, the it officials looked, didn't see it. They it looked like he it looked like he was on the underneath there. Is, and and there's the first bucket. back cut of the evening, and we see Alec Freem score, and Bellman's lead is up to seven. And another Just a careless. careless turnover, not paying attention there, had it knocked away. Here's Whelan, the, the Bellman can't hold it for one shot, and that's what Scotty Everett wants them to do. Would guarantee them going into the locker room with at least a seven point lead. Seven turnovers, four by Sky Clark, and that's three of his that are just careless, unforced turnovers. Suter drives in on James, and we're gonna get an offensive foul on Suter with 6.4 seconds left, so 
the cards uh, will get a chance. Let's see the replay on this because I'm not sure how Tony Giazza misses this. Well, he's up. He's just not positioned to see it. But he. Well, he's right on the baseline. He, he's, oh, I see. He stepped out. <laughs> he definitely stepped out of bounds. Pat Driscoll was out front there. Tony Chiazza, was, was he on the other side of the basket? He was, on, he was right yeah. on the other side of the basket, yeah. Another foul on McKinney. Plenty of fouls to give for the Knights. Just their third of the half, and they've all come here in the last minute. 3.3 seconds left to play, and we'll see if the Cards can get a shot off and close this seven-point deficit before they head to the line. I would think they might even foul again if they can. He's got to be careful not to foul a three-point shooter. shooter or trainer. Oh, trainer could have just turned and shot it. White all the way to the basket, up and in, and that'll be big to give the Cards a little bit of momentum heading into the locker room as they trail by five. Bellerman leads it after 20 minutes, 27-22, nice. Get a couple post touches at least, even if you don't shoot from the post. Get a couple of post touches and make this defense work a little bit. Same five that started the game for both teams. Whelan, Hatton, Freem. Suter and Tipton for Bellerman. And Whelan with a kind of a circus shot. Pretty good defensive possession for the cards. And here comes Trey White, Mike James, J.J. Trainer, Scott Clark, and Brandon Huntley Hatfield out there for Louisville. James hit that three right at the beginning. He had one more drive. All the offense they got out of him in the first half. And J.J. Trainer did not score coming off a 20-point effort. Huntley Hatfield trying to get something going in the paint but has it taken away, and Kenny Payne not happy about that. And he is the, the biggest missing piece right now for Louisville. Has not scored and just had the ball taken right away from him there. Suter over James in the paint, can't get it to go, but the ball comes off and it's going to be off trainer's foot. Bellerman possession. That Huntley Hatfield's got to do something on the offensive end and then there on the defensive end, he needs to grab that ball. The ball went off of J.J. Trainer's foot. Both those guys had an opportunity to grab it. Trainer with a goal 10. See what happens when you don't grab the rebound when you have the opportunity there. You give them another opportunity or another possession and uh, you get the goal to an easy bucket and now back to a seven point lead here for Bellerman. Ties Bellerman's largest lead of the game. You were hoping to see a little more intensity, a little more life out of this Louisville squad out of the locker room. White to the basket, blocked by Hatton, but with 18.30 left in the game, Trey White will go to the line to attempt the very first free throw of the night for the Cards. That's all they did on Sunday, 49 of them. And now tonight, the first two. That was the first personal on hat. I don't believe foul trouble will come into play for the Knights. They've committed four so far in the game. No, it's not going to be like uh, Mexico State where six guys foul out. If it is, we're in for a long half here. Twenty-nine, twenty-three. Suter all the way to the basket, takes the hit, can't get it to go, but he gets the offensive rebound. Out to Freem, back to Suter. Tipton on Huntley Hatfield. Here's Freem to a cutting Whelan, misses. Couldn't quite get it up on the rim, but another offensive rebound, this time by Hatton in the lane, and we're gonna get a foul on the cards. And that's James and Trey White both looking at each other in both had a chance to get that ball, and either one of them reached for it, and it's just a loose ball, a little extra hustle from Bellerman. And again, on the baseline out of bounds, they get a layup, but Suter can't make it. The Knights just kind of out hustling the cards here tonight. Clark to the basket, a shot in the paint, but he can't get that to go, and tipped him with the rebound for Bellerman. That's a start, at least drive the ball to the basket, take it to the rim, and try to just make something happen. Didn't get that one to go. 
tipped in the drive, and Huntley Hatfield got just enough of that. And White will go back to the line for two more free throws. In the last couple possessions at both ends, the cards look more engaged. Yeah, they do, and, and they, they've got to. I mean, they, they, the, I think the the whole tale of this whole game was two possessions ago when you looked at Trey White and Mike James, two of the guys who actually have done a good job on the boards, looking at each other and the ball bouncing right between them in an easy bucket for Bellerman. Since then... Louisville's hopefully picking up some of the intensity. If not, this is going to be a long second half. Cars have really gotten little to nothing out of Tyler Johnson, who's been such a catalyst uh, in their last couple games. The games in New York, even though they were two losses, and then also the win over New Mexico State. Um, Johnson could not score in that first half. Missed a couple of deep threes that weren't, weren't great shots. Cards back within three. And Alec Freeman is going to go to the line as he draws the foul on Scott Clark. Second on Clark. And Freeman has shot the only two free throws of the night for Bellerman in that, what was it, a 45-minute first half. Yeah. So we'll have uh, four free throws apiece now for these two teams. thing tonight as Mike James fakes, takes it into the lane. Look at me like when he was driving, he had trainer wide open. James going to get a look at three, and he got it. He started the game that way, and he hits his second triple of the night. We haven't seen Sky Clark and Tyler Johnson together. That's the lineup I think has really energized this team in a couple of games recently, and I just wonder if we're going to get that here in, in sometime in the second half. Johnson is... is the better distributor, more of a pure point guard. Yeah. And, and Clark, Clark has obviously shown us he can score. Yeah, he scored Clark, 29 in the last game. Clark has played much better when he's been able to play off the ball a little bit as we see Trey White and Lena. Same spot as James. Trainer misses it. Huntley Hatfield. And that ball's going to go off of Tipton. Tipton. Off of Tipton. And we lose the ball on the baseline. 20 seconds on the shot clock. 16-22 left to play. And Bellerin leads Kenny Payne's cards by two. The Knights looking for a second straight win over Louisville as Billy Smith checks in. Tipton will get a break here, I'm sure, just till that under-16 timeout. And the cards turn it over. And again, another unforced turnover on an inbounds from Louisville. The first inbound turnover we've seen tonight, but in that first half, three of the seven turnovers just totally unforced. Make it four now. Des McKinney in for Hatton for Bellerman. Yeah, Bellerman's two biggest wins since making that move up to Division One. A win in the championship game of the A-Sun tournament in Freedom Hall. And then their very next game was their game here in the KFC Yum Center last year to open the season. That one point went over Louisville. Suter focused on driving on James, and then it's Alec Freem going back door. Suter finds him, and the Knights are back up by four. You know they're going to do it. That's what they do in Louisville. You just got to be more disciplined on defense. James, did that even... Mike James has hit two triples tonight. Cards trail 33 to 29 with 15.45 left to play. Coming into it, but boy, he likes this building, doesn't he? He and Freem, both graduates of Bellarmine, a couple degrees and captains on this team as well. As Bellarmine now with an 18-8 lead, points in the paint, that should not be the case. And Huntley Hatfield and Sky Clark, they have seven of the cards, nine turnovers here tonight. 
White with some pretty good defense. And we have Tyler Johnson on the court right now, along with Trey White, Brandon Huntley, Hatfield, Scott Clark, and J.J. Trainer for the cards. And Tyler, we'll see if he can have a little more impact on the game here in the second half. And we see him in there with Scott Clark. I do love this offense for Louisville on the offensive end. I like this lineup for when these two are in there together. Kicks it over to Clark for three, and Sky able to hit the triple, his second three of the night. Nothing special there. Tyler just getting the ball to him, and he's in the corner open for the three. Well, McKinney just takes Johnson right to the basket and gets the easy two. And that's what one thing where, as good as Tyler's been in some other categories, he's got to get better defensively in recognizing where he's at on the floor. Tipton set the check in at the next dead ball for Bellerman. Ten on the shot clock for the Cards. Clark gets to the basket and an easy two for him. Probably the easiest basket the Cards have scored all night. It's amazing what how easy it can be when you do take the ball to the basket. He put his head down and knew what he was going to do and went and did it. We're going to get a foul there, I believe. Yeah, it's free. Well, he went down. But here's the, the, here's the frame. We see Scott Clark with a triple from the corner. Tyler drawing the defense and, and kicking it over to Sky for the open three. Tipped him back in for Bellerman. As the cards on this possession with a chance to take the lead. Tyler all the way to the basket. Huntley Hatfield with a nice catch and he scores. That and that's was something we haven't seen in a while. And you hadn't seen that since New York. That was a tough catch. He did bobble it, but regained it in a hurry and put it up and scored. Cards on a 7-2 run. If Huntley Hatfield gets it in the paint, Bellerman should not be able to stop him. But cards have not been able to get it to him down there much tonight. Tipton going to drive five on the shot clock. His turnaround misses, and Huntley Atfield with the rebound. Cards up one, looking to extend it. Back to Huntley Hatfield. The quick spin to the baseline on Suter and draws the foul. I, look, it's amazing to me. You see such a difference when Tyler is in the game with Sky. It just flows better offensively for Louisville. Yes, I know on the defensive end they're not as good, but you've got to score the basketball, and it's something they've had trouble doing when the two of them haven't been out there together. I may have spoke too soon when I said we weren't going to see foul trouble for Bellman because Pete Suter, right there, their leading scorer who's playing tonight, um, at least for the season with Ben Johnson out, Heads to the Bellman bench with 13.27 left with three personal fouls. And now it'll be Hatton who draws that assignment probably on Huntley Hatfield. But right now it's Tipton and the cards go right inside to him. He powers his way up. Can't get that to go, but he'll get a couple of free throws. And he is much, much more engaged on the last couple of possessions than what we saw early in the game from Brandon Huntley Hatfield. He's only... Two, two fouls and two rebounds, 0 for 1, and two turnovers in the eight and a half minutes, eight minutes and 57 seconds he played in the first half. Did not do a lot, and when he turned it over a couple of times, it, it looked like he kind of got mentally out of it a little bit. You could see him put his head down and wasn't really into it. Now you see him taking the ball to the basket, being strong with it. He came down with a big rebound on the other end of the floor a couple of possessions ago. Huntley Hatfield is engaged. And when he is, Louisville's a different team. This is just his ninth free throw attempt of the season. He's five for eight so far, make it six for nine. And the cards are up two. He already has three rebounds here in the second half. Tyler, Tyler gets with hand. a little deflection, but Tipton came up with it for Bellerman. And we're going to get another foul on Freem on a screen. He was kind of sideways. And already after, they didn't commit a foul until about a minute left in that first half or get called for one. Right now, six team fouls on the Knights here with 13 minutes left to play. So the cards could potentially shoot some free throws down the stretch in this one in a game they lead by two. And I would think you'd go right back to Huntley Hatfield. Tyler 
hit that. That, that didn't feel like a great shot in the offense, but it goes in for two. No, and not a lot of movement away <laughs> from the ball, so he just decided I'm going to take this shot, and it goes in. Wheeling the cut, and he'll go shoot two free throws. This is Card's largest lead of the night at four points with just over 12 and a half minutes to play. And the third personal foul now on Brandon Huntley Hatfield. I'm sorry, Mike James, that foul yeah. on his third personal foul. James talking to Pat Driscoll about something there. I'm not sure what it was. Wheeler misses the first of two free throws. You know, James started the year so hot in that 25 points, 10 rebounds in the opener. He'll head to the bench with eight points here tonight. He does have two threes, which those two threes are more than he's hit in the last four games combined. Just one for 10. He didn't know he was had three fouls. Upset coming out, but took him out with three fouls. Wheeler knocks in the second free throw, and the lead is three. Johnson, Clark, White, Huntley, Hatfield, and Caleb Glenn, former male high star, and off the cut, Scott Clark. That was Cutting good. with a purpose there, Jody. Not only that, but a good job by Huntley Hatfield on the handoff because he faked it going kind of one way and knew exactly what he was doing. He was telling Sky the entire time, and a good job there, and over and back now for Louisville. And that was the two captains, Tipton and Frame. Energy on the floor right now for Louisville. Huntley Hatfield engaged. Caleb Glenn out there gives him a little more energy, some hustle. And then Tyler Johnson and Sky Clark together. I, I can't stress enough how much it's different the offense is as that's an unforced turnover there by the freshman. Smith, the Tipton in the paint. White on him. Smith with a nice pump fake and the running jumper can't go. Glenn with the rebound. Five rebounds for the freshman Caleb Glenn. You wonder down the stretch here, Jody, is we're going to get a foul on Smith on the Johnson drive. We'll talk about it after the break. Louisville with a five-point lead with 11.41 to go. Back to the KFC Up Center, 11.41 to play. Louisville leading Bell. Tyler Johnson line. Bellman with no field goals in the last 310. And Louisville is five for five in that span. And one of the reasons the Cards have outscored the Knights 20 to nine in the first eight plus minutes of this second half to just erase that five point Bellman halftime deficit. And right now, Louisville with its biggest lead of the night at 43 36. Cards with Johnson, Clark, Glenn, Trainer, and White. Tipton, Whelan, Suter, Frame, and Hatton on the court for the night. Suter with three personal fouls, and Coach Davenport going back to him. Whelan will get a look at a three. Caleb Caleb Glenn. Glenn. That was a man's rebound right there. And six of them as Tyler goes right to the basket. That one's blocked, but attacking Tyler Johnson. Bellerman just three for 14 from three tonight. And tonight's not named Garrett Tipton, just one for eight. Johnson with the runner, and boy, what a difference he makes. He does, six points, two assists, and two rebounds, all in a five and a half minute stretch here in the second half, and there's Sky and Tyler creating something in the backcourt, an offensive foul, putting a little pressure on Bellerman. That is the third personal foul on Alec Freem, all on screens, as the Louisville lead is nine, and Bellerman's already committed eight personal fouls, or been called for eight personal fouls, after just three and all in really the final minute of that first half. And as Scotty Davenport spent, uh, I would say, 90% of that timeout having a discussion with Pat Driscoll as Sky Clark hits the triple from the corner, and the cards are now 
up by 12. Clark just looks comfortable out here in the second half. He looks comfortable with the other guys that are playing around him and letting things come to him. Good look there from three. The trend continues. Sky Clark and Trey White have both scored in double figures in every game this season for Louisville. Clark with 15 right now, coming off his career high 29 point night. Suter on the drive, can't get the, the finish there, and then Trainer can't come up with the loose ball. Suter drives again, has it knocked. Johnson deflected it. I'm not sure that didn't go off Suter. Yeah, it was, it was an interesting, uh, the way Johnson deflected it, it looked like it did go off Suter, but neither official had a good look as you see Sky Clark. He had a good look, and a good look at three right there for Sky Clark, who now has 15. Air ball by Tipton as he's still stuck on 10 points. He's, he's kind of forcing some things now, and you can tell it's kind of got to him a little bit. A couple missed shots have compounded things, and that one, you know, just, just not a couple good Whoa. shots. And now we're going to get the foul on very similar to the foul Suter drew late in that first half on Sky Clark. He does it on trainer this time. I was wondering if fatigue might come into play here. This Bellarmine team played Sunday early evening at West Virginia, and they're also shorthanded, obviously, without leading scorer Ben Johnson. And Bash Whelan says fatigue, what fatigue? He drives in, gets a left-handed shot to go, and he'll get a chance for a three-point play here as the Knights are back within 10. Let's take a look at that, Jody. Yeah, we watch Caleb Glenn get beat. The freshman makes a freshman mistake. And then fouls. Johnson sidelined, by the way, by a hip injury. Landon Hacker sidelined by a knee injury for the Knights. And Kurt Holf, who would be their starting center out for the entire season with a knee injury as well. Bellowin back within nine. Tyler Johnson gets it to Trainer in the paint. Boy, did he elevate to get that in. I'll tell you what, J.J. Trainer, his mom elevated, right? She's sitting real close to us, and she got up on that one. A nice job by Trainer. And by the way, that points in the paint now, 22-16 Bellerman is the third personal foul there on Caleb Glenn. And that, Kent, that statistical line for Tyler Johnson, now six points, three assists, and two rebounds in six minutes here in the second half. Is that the fourth foul on James? Mike James very upset on that. I did not see it. Let's see the foul. Uh, can't really tell a whole <laughs> lot there. They both went on the ground and there wasn't a whole lot of contact, but there was a foul called. James will head to the Louisville I, bench. He has eight points tonight, but four personal fouls now with 923. You figure he'll sit until the under four at least. And we'll see if uh, Bellerman can get back in this game as Wheeland hits the free throw. Ten point game, 9.23 left. So Bellerman within nine here. I was going to say the Cards have taken this lead by not settling for bad threes, driving, and then that's the third bad three we've seen uh, Tyler Johnson shoot tonight. Freeman with a baseline jumper got it, and Bellerman is back within seven. So the Knights showing a little bit of life here with 8.50 to play. Yeah, for all the good that he has done, Kenny Payne's going to take a timeout. For all the good that Tyler Johnson has done, that three-pointer was not good because it was never even close. And uh, it gave Bellum a chance to cut the lead to seven. 46 seconds to settle the River City rivalry here. Let's take a look at the notable non-conference games for Bellarmine. They're well-traveled. <laughs> they are. Washington at Kansas State and West Virginia. Here, still going to play Utah at BYU later in December. Last year, over the years, now, they played Duke at Clemson at Kentucky last year, at Louisville last year. There. Cards 7 of 21 from 3, 11 of 22 from 2. 
And they'll get a three in the corner from Scott Clark. Can't get it to go. But Trainer with the offensive rebound. And he's got it. He gets it to go. He also had Huntley Hatfield under the basket. Yeah, His he, mom loves it. He had Huntley Hatfield <laughs> under the basket. But he's got that soft little touch from right in that spot. And a good job for Trainer on the uh, offensive putback. A foul on Trey White on the drive. And we're going to shoot a lot of free throws here again tonight, I believe, Ken. You jinxed it. There's no way it's going to catch up to a Sunday, though. Uh, it's a, we got a long a way to bet. do that. Here's Suter, the sophomore from Carmel, Indiana. Carmel High School. Entering the evening, a 70% free throw shooter. A starter on state championship teams, Jody, is a freshman and a junior, and they didn't have the tournament when he was a sophomore because of COVID. Pretty impressive. And I think that winning pedigree is something that Scott Davenport recruits at Bellamy. He does. That's something that they always look for. Guys from winning programs, guys from teams that have gone to one state championships or at least gone to championships, and he loves to get those type of kids in his program. And it's worked. 52-45, Suter up to six points. Three nights in double figures. Bash Wheelan leading them with 14 points as Johnson misses the runner. And Clark runs down the offensive rebound. Gets it to White in the corner for three. That's long. And Bash with the rebound for the Knights as they'll try to cut into this seven-point deficit with under eight to play. Suter, the drive on Huntley Hatfield. Alex Freem's three is off. And Huntley Hatfield with the rebound. That's now seven rebounds for Huntley Hatfield, so five here in the second half. It's the time in the game when Bellerman would have maybe gone to Ben Johnson for a three. And he's White. not available time. How about Huntley Hatfield inside the offensive rebound of the putback? That's rebound number seven, and that's a big one to put back there. I was going to say, Jody, lead. fair to say that the, as we get another offensive foul here on Bellerman. Goodness. I was waiting for an explosion for that Bellerman bench. Move on nine point lead. A really good Dale looks 13. great, by the way, too. He does. A really good 13 minutes this half. Most of it has been with. Tyler Johnson and Sky Clark on the floor together. Brandon Huntley Hatfield engaged. Trey White's made a couple of shots. Louisville offensively has been pretty good this half. We'll see what they do coming out of that timeout. Louisville's already hit seven three-pointers in this game, and that ties their season high as they go right into Huntley Hatfield. And how about Alan Frame with the defensive stop? But the seven threes, the same number they hit in that one-point loss to Texas up in Madison Square Garden, Jody. Tipton's baseline jumper short, and that'll be rebound just, number nine for Huntley Hatfield. Tipton just can't get going. Four of 14 for Tipton. He's been stuck on 10 points for a while. Clark, his three is off. See if the Knights have one more run left in them. They trail by nine. With 6.21 left to play. Bash Wheatland leads Bellerman with 14 points. Tipton has 10, Freeman has 10. And for Louisville, Sky Clark with 15 to lead the way, and Trey White with 11. Can at the under eight or the under 12 of the first half, Tipton was three of five from the field and had eight points. Since then, he's one of nine from the field. And it was that dunk on the break, right? Yes, that it was. was his last basket. That was his last basket. Suter to Whelan, and he gets a clean lane right to the basket. And he has 16 points. Trainer gambled, missed on the gamble. No help there for Louisville on defense. We're going to get Caleb Glenn back in here for Louisville as they have really shortened. That's going to be an offensive foul. Um, we'll see it here. <laughs> it's a lot of... He went down hard. Bash Whelan with 16 points to lead Bellman. One off of his career high. Scored 17 at Kansas State earlier this season. Bash might go for that right here. 
13 on the shot clock. This feels like a key possession in a seven-point game with five and a half minutes to play. And Garrett Tipton hits the triple. He has 13 points, and Bellerman is back within four. He had missed seven shots in a row, but he got that one to go down to cut the lead to four. Suter did it again, and I'm, I'm surprised I, they didn't I, call that. Looked like the most emphatic. Yeah. Well, if, I, I don't know if you run into Caleb Glenn. That may well I, but, be the result. We're going to get a foul here on the rebound, and I think Caleb Glenn got fouled. Are they going to call that on Bellman? Are they going to And the yeah, bench is asking them to. There's the Tipton three. And the Louisville bench asking them to look at the. What they thought was a flop. Tony Chiazza standing in the middle of the floor is not going to listen to Coach Davenport or Coach Payne. Glenn, this is where Caleb Glenn has struggled mightily uh, this season. Just one for six now from the line this season. And he'll get a second chance and a chance to increase this Louisville lead. And he misses them both. Big possession here Whelan. defensively for Louisville. Whelan with leads Bellin with 16. That one is short, but the cards can't come over the rebound as Glenn has it go off his hand out of bounds. And he's going to come out for Huntley Hadfield. A block by Trey White there, though. Huntley Hadfield with a game-high nine rebounds. Here we go. 29 on the shot clock. 4.52 Did the ball hit the left rim? to play. Yeah, I was going to say, the ball never hit the rim. Is that, they're going to review they're it. They're back at 10. Put it back to 10, okay. 10 seconds on the shot clock. 4.52 left to play. Louisville by four. That's and the cards it. just one for seven. Their last Come seven out. field goal right. attempts. A 2.29 scoring drought. And they'll get a chance to talk about it and, in a timeout. And Kent, that is where Bellarmine is so dangerous on those inbounds plays underneath the basket. And Louis, the Louisville coaching staff giving their guys high fives on there because they did a really nice job. They switched. A couple guys switched. They didn't let anything. There's cutters. After, there's movers. There's all kinds of things. They've given up about five layups on yeah. that same play uh, throughout the course of the game. Huntley Hatfield with the layup with 7.21 left to play in this game. That was Louisville's last field goal, last points. That gave them a 54-45 lead, but the last five points have been scored by the Knights. Without question, and I know you have two schools just a couple miles apart, but the best crowd we've had in here this season. It is a, it's a, been a good night here for uh, for basketball in the city so far. This is a two-game series that came about when Bellarmine let Louisville use Freedom Hall for the NCAA volleyball tournament a couple years ago. This is the final year of that two-game series. And by the way, the Louisville volleyball team will be back here in the KFCM Center. We're going to get a fourth foul on Prem as Tyler Johnson goes to the ground. Fourth foul on Prem, tenth foul on the night. So Cards will now shoot two. The remainder of this one, but the volleyball team back in here this weekend again to host NCAA volleyball, or this week, Thursday and hopefully Friday. A lot of offensive fouls so far in this one is Trey White, the jumper from the baseline, and that rattles out. Cards drop now at two and a half minutes, and we're going to get another offensive foul. This time on Billy Smith. I mean, that that is like at least 10 offensive fouls combined on these two teams. In this Let's take half. another look at this one. Mike James back in with four fouls. He's been out for quite a while.
Might want to go back to Huntley Hatfield. Oh, oh. Johnson trying to hit a cutting James off his fingertips. Smith beats everybody down. He gets, he's going to go to the line. He foul on Trey White. So Billy Smith will get two free throws here and a chance to cut that Louisville lead to just two. If he hits them both, it'll cap us. It'll be a 7-0. Bellarmine run, and Smith has not missed a free throw yet this season. Two for two for the transfer from Miami of Ohio. When Louisville's had success in this half, they were going to the basket. Smith hits the first free throw. The 6'7 sophomore from Indianapolis. Rebuffed Jesuit High School. Started 14 games last year for the Red Hawks. And a chance to hit a second free throw and get Bellman within two points with 4.04 to play. And this could get interesting down the stretch. Cards have not scored since 721. Yeah, now they look they tentative. They get Huntley Hatfield posting up. He's going to come up, set a screen for Johnson, and then if he roll, he's got McKinney. And, and that it, was a it, good it, offensive possession. It was, it, it, it was, and he went one way and actually decided to go the other way as Huntley Hatfield now on the defensive end. Whelan misses the three, and Clark with the rebound for the Cards. Oh, what a oh. move. He split the defenders. And, and he had Huntley Hatfield early. He decided he was going to put his head down and go to the basket, split the defenders, and a nice little nifty move from Scott Clark. Feels like a key stretch there. Bellerman had got back within two. And Louisville with a quick 4-0 run. Three minutes left to play. Tipped him for three. Got it. And Huntley Hatfield did a nice job on the first time running him off of the three-point line, but then they had to make two more passes, and Huntley Hatfield got caught up in some traffic and gave him just enough room to hit the three. Tipped it now up to 16 points. Clark with 17 to lead all scores. Two and a half minutes left to play. Louisville by three. See if they go back to Huntley Hatfield inside. They'll bring the double as Shooter goes down again. And then look at the pass from Johnson to James for the easy two. McKinney likes the matchup on Johnson. He took him to the basket earlier. We'll see if they can get a Tipton shot here late in the shot clock. 10 seconds to shoot. We're going to get a foul on Sky Clark. And that'll get Garrett Tipton two free throws when we return. Clark all the way to the basket for two. Garrett Tipton says, hold on a minute, fellas. We still got a game. Five point difference, two minutes left. They had a career high 29 points in Sunday's overtime win over to Mexico State. And Sky Clark doing it again tonight. 17 points to lead the car. He has been really good here in the second half for Louisville as Tipton Gets the first free throw to cut it to four. You see the game summary there. Tipton has equaled Clark with those 17 points, and Tipton's four for four from the line this season, and now two for two tonight, and the lead is back to three for the Cards with 2.05 to play, two minutes to settle. Who has the bragging rights in the River City? Louisville leading Bellarmine 60 to 57. The Cards looking to get over 500 at four and three with a win before they start ACC play on Sunday at Virginia Tech. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Johnson with a jumper and got it. What a shot from the freshman and the lead is back to five. Difference maker here in the second half, Tyler Johnson. Now Louisville needs to do something defensively and they got a matchup problem. Shooter inside, and we've kind of seen that call both ways. We're going to get a technical on Scotty Davenport. I think it's on the bench. That has been brewing for a while. They've called that something. Uh, that, uh, they've looked like flops kind of at both ends throughout the night, and that time it was Tyler Johnson yeah. inside. And I they, mean, honestly, there's not a ton of contact been on any of them really and there have been about 20 <laughs> there's been a lot of them 
And we mentioned, actually, let's watch, let's watch the replay here. Here we go. Tyler inside. Now, was he, was he outside the restricted area? I wasn't even looking at that. White hits one of two free throws, so the lead to six. And a global possession at the other end of the floor under the Bellarmine basket. That had been brewing for a while after uh, Coach Davenport spent that almost that entire time out earlier in this half talking to Pat Driscoll. Louisville. Four of their last four after missing eight in a row. Ten on the shot clock. Johnson dribbles into everybody, and he's going to foul, and that's going to give Alec Frank two free throws with 110 left, and Bellerman a chance to cut into this lead with the clock stopped. And as good as Johnson has been tonight, he does have five assists, and that was just his third turnover, but he went right into all that traffic. I was going to say, we've praised him a lot, and rightly so. He has been good in the second half, but that was a terrible possession right there. Not only... Kenny Payne saying you can't be sure they go yeah, behind you, your back. You in the middle can't of the lane. dribble in traffic and then try to go behind your back. And then to compound it even more, you foul, you know, so far away from the basket. You can't. Alec Flynn, five for five from the line tonight. He has... 11 points, now 12, and the Louisville lead is four with 1.10 to go. And you figure this might be the last possession where we see it play out through the shot clock. And Kenny, and Kenny Payne telling, setting something up here, telling Sky Clark, giving him directions. I think Bellerman will let this possession go, and then Scotty Downboard does like to stretch out the game, so... Swing it, six on the shot clock. Inside the trainer for the overhead slam, and the Louisville lead is six. Wow, that's a great possession from Louisville. The skip pass from White, the three-pointer from Bellerman off the mark. We're gonna get a foul. The skip pass, though, into the corner from White to James to Clark, and then the easy dunk. That is great ball movement and a really good possession. The drive by White in the corner, and look at the ball movement. Is that the fifth foul on Mike James? Did they call that on James? So Mike James fouls out here. 35 seconds left to play. Bash Whelan heading to the line for Bellarmine. Card shooting 55% from the field in this second half, and Bellarmine just 31%. One thing I will say, and they're looking at something. I can't figure out what we're looking at here. A foul Pat, on that Pat drive, Driscoll I'm not sure. At the monitor, checking something out. So 35 seconds left to play. Louisville with a six-point lead. Cards with two timeouts. Bellarmine with just one timeout, but the Knights do have the possession arrow. And Louisville, by the way, Jody, now with the lead points of the paint, 28-24 cards. It was 18 to 6 at one point, 16 to 6 at one point. Well, and I still 30. don't know what we're looking at here. Tony Chiazza says nothing, so we're not gonna worry about it. the stretch here, Wheeland has kind of looked for the three a couple times, which Louisville's probably all right with because he's just four for 22 this season from three, but he does have 16 points and five rebounds, and the 6'6 graduate from Cincinnati, Ohio's Lakota East High School, he's got that Bellarmine degree as well, steps to the line and hits the free throw to get the Knights within five with 35 seconds left to play. And Scott Davenport will foul relatively quickly. Yeah. I think they'll try oh, to get a steal it. if they get it over half court. They'll try to extend this game as long yes. as they can. I think you have to at this point. A little pressure from the Knights. Clark gets it and they'll foul immediately. Billy Smith will put Sky Clark to the line. Clark has not attempted a free throw yet tonight. Fourth foul on it, Billy Smith. 
Guy Clark to the line for Louisville, where he is. He was 15 of 16 on Sunday, by the way, in that New Mexico State game and shooting 76% for the season. Seven of nine against Indiana last week in New York. And one for one tonight, and the lead is back to five. And he'll have a chance to make it a two-possession game with the second free throw with 33.9 seconds left. Those two look pretty good for Sky. He's up to 19 points. The lead is six. 30 seconds and counting. Freem all the way to the basket. And I thought White might have got a piece of it, but it still goes in. And Bellarmine has cut the lead to four, and they'll use their final timeout with 26.5 seconds on the clock. And what's the strategy session in each huddle now, Jody? Well, I think if you're Louisville, you got to know that pressure's coming. You're going to get fouled. You've got to be strong with the ball. Second half. Cards will have four more non-conference games, but they, are, they will be after their ACC opener on Sunday at Virginia Tech. All right, here we go. Louisville ball. Cards with two timeouts. Bellman does not have any timeouts, but does have the possession arrow, and the Knights are pressing. We'll see if the Cards can get it in. They cannot, and they'll call one of those two timeouts. And now Trainer throwing it in there. They had they had the guys stacked up. They doubled Clark. And Johnson. Johnson going down to the baseline, but then kind of standing still. He's got to move a little bit more there. We'll see if Louisville changes anything up here as they stack the guys down the court on that one. Bellerman's going to foul right when the ball comes into play if they don't get a steal. If you're Bellerman, who on the court for Louisville, if you had a pick? I guess well, I'm right picking, now you'd want to foul Huntley Hatfield, right? I, I, yes, because Trainer's throwing the ball in. I think you, if, if Huntley Hatfield gets it, you definitely want to foul him. Now, Huntley Hatfield, simply for his size and length advantage, though, if he would maybe sprint down to the baseline, they should be able to get it into him. We'll see if uh, Johnson or Clark is able to free themselves up here. Trainer set to throw it in. The Bellman will not guard the inbounds pass. Trainer throws it in, but it's deflected by and Huntley out Hatfield of late coming up. And that's what they're telling him. Huntley Hatfield, they're telling him to settle down. Huntley Hatfield flashed up. But he did it late. Did any time come off? Sometime had to come off the clock. Right? The ball was tipped. Right? I mean, isn't that what we started with? 25 minutes exactly. Or was it 26.5? Right? Gets it into Huntley Hatfield. And F Bell oh, Scotty Devport wanted the walk, but Huntley Hatfield will go to the line where he is one for two tonight. And will. So Suter fouls out. Suter fouls out with six points and seven rebounds. And at this point, if the Cards can hit their free throws and not turn it over against that press, just get it in bounds, really, because they're going to get fouled immediately. They will get out of here with a win and be over 500 this season. Well, Lee Hatfield, one of two tonight, six of nine for the season. 75% free throw shooter last year. This is the that back one. of the rim. Now, if you're Bellarmine, do you go for a quick two? Or I are you do. Trying to get uh, yeah. to the no, three? I think you go. I think you go for a quick two. You've got time. I still think right now. Now I think you got to go for a three. Let's McKinney see what they is do. probably going to go to the basket on Johnson. I'm guessing he does, and he gets the easy two with 17.8 left, and the Knights are within three. They get it into Clark. And get that the foul was, on Tipton. Right? That was to really <laughs> close to being. Well, no, I that mean, was, it, but it was really turnover. close to being a jump ball just before that. And the Bellarmine couldn't see who it was before Tipton reached in to try to grab it. And Clark did a nice job of kind of accelerating through the contact. 
Clark two for two from the line tonight. A chance to get over the 20 point mark again if he can just hit one of these two free throws. And one of the two free throws would also make it a two possession game. He hits the first and the cards are up by four. It's a two possession game now. Bellerman, you have to come down and get a, th you get a three as you see Louisville at the free throw line. Not quite 49 of them like it was on Sunday, but Sky Clark now three for three after going 15 of 16 against New Mexico State. And hitting them under some pretty serious game pressure here right now. See if McKinney goes again to the basket. No, they're going to go for the three now. And Smith's three from the corner is good. And it's a two-point game with nine seconds left. Cards get it into White. Tipton fouls him. And it'll be Trey White going to the line with 8.3 seconds left to play. And goodness gracious, Jody. They're going to make him earn it. They are, as we see a replay on this, they come down the floor and just not sure where Huntley Hatfield was on that one coming out late. Billy Smith, his second triple of the night. White's five for six from the line tonight, make it six for seven, and the lead is three, but this is the big one here. Would make it a two possession game with 8.3 seconds left. You get into the territory where It'll be tough for them without a turnover to get two possessions, and it is a two White possession. Trey White with now 14 points, and it's 72 68 cards. McKinney all the way to the basket, it won't go. The rebound for Huntley Hatfield, that's his 10th rebound of the night. He'll get to shoot two free throws, and Louisville is going to get out of here with a win that will improve the cards to four and three this season. But boy, did they have to earn it tonight. Yes, they did, and a huge second half from Tyler Johnson, Huntley Hatfield, and Sky Clark. Sky Clark with 15 points in the second half. All of those points are all but three of those points coming with Tyler on the floor on the floor together. As we said early on, Ken, it's a difference. You can see a big difference out there with those two guys playing together and Clark playing off the ball. Bellman after committing after being caught for only three personal fouls in that first half, and all really in the final minute. Minute Nin 22. 19 fouls in the second half for Bellman as Huntley Hatfield hits the free throw. He has nine points and 10 rebounds, and the Louisville lead is five with 1.8 seconds left to go. A double-double, no. He does not get the double-double, but Louisville will get out of here with a win, and the cards are four and three heading into ACC play on Sunday at Virginia Tech. That's a good win for Louisville because of the fact that Louisville lost to this team